This December I'm making a Christmas calendar using vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. In each one of these days I'm going to procedurally generate a unique Christmassy item because I need icons like these around this time and good free ones are hard to come by. I also want to easily scale and color them in different ways. I hope you'll follow along and implement your own versions so I can showcase them in a special video on the 24th. You'll practice working with coordinates, basic math, and various JavaScript programming techniques. It's a good project, I think, to learn about code modularity, reusability, and how to write consistent code. Today is day four, and we're gonna draw a candy cane. Coding with Rob. Let's code now. To draw the candy cane here, next to all the other items, we go to index.html and prepare a new function here in our functions array for the fourth day. And let's call this one draw cane. We implement this in a new file, cane.js. And in VS Code, you can control click this and it's going to create for you the file inside of this items folder. Here we define our draw cane function, given a context x, y for the center, a size and a hue to control the color. I'm going to test this by quickly drawing a bounding box here. I'm getting the top and left helper variables and then using this stroke rect function at the top left with the size and the size. So it's gonna be a square. Save, refresh, and now we see that we are ready to draw our candy cane. I want this to have an arc here at the top and then continue straight down. So I would like to control how wide it is and maybe how thick the, the candy is. So two more helper variables here, the width, let's say half the size, and then the thickness, maybe 10% of the size, like so. And I'm going to use an, an object to store this arc properties. And the first one is going to be the radius. Now, I don't want this to go outside of the bounding box. So I'm going to subtract here the thickness from the width and then divide by two. In that way, also the thickness gets halved, so it's not going to exceed the borders there. Now, the X is just going to be X. I want it to be in the middle. And the Y, I have to use a getter this time because from the top, I want to add the radius and also half of that thickness if I don't want it to exceed the screen size. And with these properties, I can now begin a path. And I can't use the circle method that I created previously because it's not customizable enough to draw just an arc of the circle. And customizing it so much may defeat the purpose of having it called a circle there, right? We're basically re-implementing the arc method instead. So I am using it here directly. I don't think that these arcs are so um, common when drawing, let's see. But up to you if you want to experiment and implement your own helper function. Now, if I'm starting from pi to zero, it essentially means that I'm starting it here on the left side and going all the way like this to 360 degrees, which is back to zero in the same way that the clock starts again and again. Now, if we save, and refresh, we see that this looks like this and it's not intersecting this bounding box. So similar things that we have done already before for the ring here. And I also want to do a line to the bottom. So line to the same arc X plus the radius to the bottom because I want it to continue from here all the way here. And this bottom is not yet defined. We can add it here at the top because it means the bottom of this region where we are allowed to draw fits well next to these other helper variables. Now, if we save, refresh, we get this general shape that we want. And I just want to decorate it by having those kind of stripes 
over it. For that, I'm going to basically draw the same path again, so stroke it one more time. And uh, let's try to set a different stroke style, maybe a dark one, and the dash. So the line dash, I will try to reuse the thickness value that we have defined here at the top, because sometimes reusing these values, if it looks good, then there's no point defining another variable and thinking of another name for it. And I think it's gonna work because it will lead to a balanced result, like the thickness between the stripes, same as the thickness of the cane itself. So I think it's a good choice. And then let's stroke one more time like this. And this is what we get. Maybe the contrast here should be bigger. I don't know. It depends also about the hue, how big the contrast is going to be. Like here, it's not that visible. So you can play with these if you want. Maybe lightest could be here and then normal for this one if you want a brighter object. Yeah, maybe something like this is nice. All these dashes remind me of that uh, one project I made with uh, Train, that Train Simulation and the Trolley Problem project, that game. It was made only using these uh, line dashes, pretty much. Check it out if curious and um, try to make this one better. I'm sure you can do that as well.